In an ongoing attempt to punish myself for being born, I have continued to seek out more difficult Elden Ring challenge runs. That led me to this idea, floor loot only. The rules for this run are simple and annoying. I can only use items that appear as loot in the world, like this, or this, or this. I can't use items that drop from enemies or bosses. I can't use items that come from quests or NPCs, and I also can't use items that come from chests. To add another layer to this, I'm also not allowed to use runes that come from enemies or bosses, which means I'll have to find golden runes to level up and upgrade my weapons. Yeah, this should be fun. If you enjoy my suffering, subscribe. Most of my viewers aren't subscribed, and it's pretty nice if you are. Alright, on to what you actually want to see. To start my run, I spawn in and immediately discard my club, since it isn't from the ground. I lose a fist fight, and when I'm revived, I get some flasks from thin air, which is not in fact the ground, so I unequip these flasks immediately. I will be able to use flasks if I pick up golden seeds, but these four flasks will forever be off limits. This is already looking great. I have nothing. I make my way to the gate front to get Torrent. But wait! Torrent's whistle is an item from Melina, which I can't use. Shit. I finally get my first item from the golden tree here, which I turn into my first and currently only flask. I do have a bit of a plan for the start of this run at least. I need a weapon, and I need runes to level up. So I go grab the lance and the uchi, which are both ground drops. I bet you can't guess which one I'm going to use. It's not like one of these is one of the best weapons in the game. With a weapon in hand, I scour the rest of the map. I get the physic flask, since luckily that's on the floor. I also get the charge attack and stamina tears. Then I go on a pilgrimage, on foot which makes it take way longer than it should, through Limgrave and the Weeping Peninsula, gathering golden seeds, sacred tears, and most importantly, runes from various graveyards, which will be my only currency to level up. I stop in Kaelid at the end of my pilgrimage to get Radagon's Nut, since free stats are going to be huge in this run. <laughs> and I also grab a Somber Nine for later. At the end of my religious journey, I have enough spare runes for five Vig levels, the Sword Seal equipped, a plus two katana, and three plus three flasks. It's not a lot, but I have a bunch of spare golden runes for later, and I feel ready for Margit, so I decide to take a swing at him. No! No! And he swings back. Oh, what? Twice. On my third try, though, I start cooking. I remember how to dodge and abuse the Uchi's weapon art for some nice early damage. If any of you thought I was going to use the lance, you're big dumb, this was clearly the only move. After dodging and circling for a bit in phase 2, I get this nice stagger, and bang, first boss dead. I come to the horrible realization here that all the talisman pouches are not in fact ground loot, so I decide to limit myself to a single talisman pouch for the entire challenge, because this run isn't awful enough yet. After a quick boppity skirt through Stormvale, I face off with Godric the Mini Armed, and on my first try, I got a little greedy. Fuck. My bad. Goderick really isn't a hard boss, but I always seem to have an incident here because I think I'm gonna big dick him when I currently have 5 levels and a plus 2 katana. That's no excuse for dying to him, but I'm already somewhat underleveled, which is a fair thing to point out. Remember to always have an excuse ready, gang. Oh, look, he's dead. Never mind, Godric is ass. I now get to do one of the worst sections of this entire challenge. Running across Lyurnia on foot. And it's pretty awful. The real challenge of this run is not dying of boredom as I traverse this massive open world. I do get more runes, stones, and a key for a magic door though, so it was a profitable walk. Now I pop into Hogwarts to fight the dog guarding the sorcerer's stone. Wait, wrong fantasy world, I mean the dog guarding the sorcerer's feet. Luckily I have my weeb weapon and get to do dope anime attacks that slap chunks out of this doggo's health bar, so it's a pretty quick fight. Oh, with style- fuck! I messed up the riposte. Now I go fight the Feet Queen and her Feet Worshippers, and luckily the Worshippers are weak as hell so they get clapped. My damage looks really good here, but I do have to pop her bubble twice to get into phase 2, and somehow I managed to use all my red flasks, so that's suboptimal, but fuck it we ball. Upon hitting her I can see my damage is hot dog shit, but bleed is a thing and that makes up for my damage pretty quickly. She tries to summon a dragon to stall, and then a giant, which forces me to flee like a coward. Eventually they go away though so we can fight one on one. Oh, nope, there's another dragon. Fuck me. I do finally get off the last hits, and now I am the Foot Lord. No deaths. Very clean. You just love to see it. After seeing that awful damage, I decide to make a detour to grab the Crystal Sword, which should be easier to upgrade with only ground loot. I grab a Somber 2 and 3, then upgrade the Crystal Meth Sword and also use more of my dwindling rune stock to get 5 int levels to wield it. Now I'm ready to game. 
Since I can't use the Dectus lift on account of the medallion not being on the floor, I make my way into the precipice. I wander up a cliffside like Alex Honnold, zooming through, till I encounter a worm that is actually a lizard. The fire lizard that is not a dragon is a pretty cool enemy, but unfortunately my damage is absolutely piss poor. Normally, I would seek out more damage, but not having torrent makes going to get more items a real pain in the ass. So instead, I decide to bull my way through. And really, it's not that bad. Big Lizzo has a simple moveset, and I do get quite a few staggers, which help a lot. I spend most of this fight in the Lizard Ussy, and eventually I finish it off. Upon arriving in Altus, I continue my on-foot pilgrimage to gather more runes and health upgrades. Also, I grab a Sombra 5 before I remember I'm going to need a shield eventually, so naturally I stop everything to go get a parry shield for way later. I grab a Sombra 4 I forgot in Lyernia, and then get kidnapped by a BDSM machine for a Sombra 6, and another 5 to make the blue raspberry sword nice and beefy. I use some runes to upgrade my sword and have enough left over to finally level up a bit again and get to 20 big. Wow. That sucks. I am grossly underleveled. Now my country bumpkin ass has to make its way into the big ol' city. But to do that, I have to beat a giant horse rider. Time to see if my damage upgrades paid off. Oh, hell yeah, dude. Oh, yeah. They did. The only real issue with this fight is my low vig. He does half my health with any attack, so I have to be wary of any wombo combos that could end my sweet life. After quite a bit of dancing, dodging, and most importantly poking, I complete my mission of lowering the boss's health bar to zero and wander into Landell. As soon as I get into Landell, chat starts trolling. No jumping for five minutes starting at 4.18.53. With channel points, my chat can pay to prevent any in-game actions for five minutes or until I die to a boss, and they immediately use this power to ban me from jumping. It's borderline impossible to do this section without jumping, and I end up getting stuck in a pit with an enemy. Here we go. God, I can't believe you banned jumping. That is so infuriating. Oh, I'm gonna be stuck right here. Fuck. I think I'm trapped here until the timer runs out. Son of a bitch. You fuck. As soon as I get jumping back, my chat bans rolling, which is less bad, but as soon as I'm close to the next grace, I reflexively roll to dodge an attack, and... Have to die to reset this portion of the run. Eventually though, I get freed and make my way through the sewers to collect an easy somber 8. I also grab Lionel's armor, the ritual shield talisman, and the spiked balls. I then decide to ban the balls for this run because they're too good, so it's actually a useless pickup. There were a lot of rune pickups in the capital, so I level a little strength and vig before going to fight the yellow man. Now I get to see how my damage is looking for the mid game. Oh, that is plenty, brother. Not gonna lie, it's looking pretty spicy. I've started to have a lot of practice on old Piss Ghost here, so I'm able to get a lot of attacks in, and his health bar depletes pretty rapidly. He still manages to hit me plenty of times due to me still sucking, but overall this fight is quick and only mildly painful for my character. With one last smack, I finish him off, and I'm ready for the next mission. I decide it's time to execute my master plan, so I wander back into the city for a few items. Mainly, I pull off this sick parkour, uh, parkour and then get the Bolt of Grand Sacks, which I plan on making my main weapon at some point in the run. After that, I grab some Heroes Runes in the capital, which have a fuck ton of runes, and a somber six for the Bolt. With the city now pillaged, I decide to challenge its leader Morgoth. This foot fetish feeder tends to be one of my worst boss fights. His twirly durly moves are simply too complex for my small monkey brain and I generally struggled to not get hit 800 times in this fight. However, that might be because on my last couple runs, I had no vig and endurance while fighting this rejected child. Because off rip, this fight feels a lot better. I do a lot of panic rolling throughout phase one, which appears to be really effective. And I almost get hit by a big slash here, but I get lucky and phase transition him. I only have two heals left, which is suboptimal, but I should be able to make it work. I cook pretty hard in phase two, dodging most of his attacks, but certainly not all of them and also getting in some hits of my own. I'm actually surprised at how well the Crystal Sword is doing, considering that I usually get smoked in this fight, and I'm doing it underleveled. It must be the sword that's carrying. There's certainly no shot, it's because I've been getting better at the game. Bang! There it is. First try again, dude. I'm disgusting. I'm filthy. I'm like a rat in a trash can, baby. I now encounter my first true problem with the run. The rolled medallion. I get it from Melina, which is illegal in this run, but I need to use it to progress the game. So I'm gonna break the rules and use it. Otherwise the run would end here and that's pretty fucking lame. 
This rule will apply to any items I need to get to Remembrance bosses, such as the Halley Tree Medallion and the Carrion Inverted Statue. And if you don't like that, then fucking eat sand, nerds. Pocket sand! On my long and atrocious run to the Fire Giant, I grab a somber 7 and 9 to finish upgrading my sweet crystal sword. With that done, it's time to fight the Fire Giant, and Chad decides they want to be trolls again. What the fuck is that? No running? Yeah, they banned me from running for my first attempt. I'm sure this will go great. Holy shit, I'm in phase two. This might actually happen. Oh no. Yeah, this is what I was worried about. I can't do anything about this. Fuck. Never mind, that move is undodgeable without running, so chat wins again. Attempt two is a lot better. Turns out being able to run makes closing the distance and doing damage to this behemoth much easier. Phase one is mostly just chasing his leg and going for charged attacks, trying to get staggers so he will sit still and let me hurt him. And the crystal sword is once again doing a lot of damage, which makes this phase very fast. Phase two is much slower. I have to play patty cake with him and his hands are fast enough that I can't hit charged attacks, so my damage decreases a lot. I just have to hope he doesn't do the fire breath and I should be good. Come here, bitch. No. I'm fucking dead again. Huh? Alright. No, I'm not. Dope. Yeah, I've got no idea how I survived that. Panic rolling comes to the rescue once again, I guess. With that much luck on my side, I feel a lot better. It's just a matter of time now. Oh, this will work. I gotta go! Yeah! I almost threw there, but it's fine. Now on to Ferrum. I pick up a few goodies in Ferrum before I face the true challenge of this run, the Godskin Duel. Remember when I randomly picked up that shield earlier? Yeah, that was for this. Since I can't buy the crafting kit, I don't have access to sleep pots, so I'm gonna actually have to fight the duo for the first time in a long time. And I'm disgustingly underleveled. This should be fine. Yeah, that's not gonna work, so it's time to make a bold move. I go to collect a few more sombers, and then I do something crazy. I spend my runes to level up the Bolt of Grand Sacks, and then sell all the gold runes I found so far to level up so I can get to the 40 decks I need to wield it. Unfortunately, the 170,000 runes I'd gathered weren't enough to level me up all the way, so I get a larval tier from the floor and head to Renala for a full respec. I sacrifice about 7 vig and... 5 int to get my strength and dex high enough to wield this weapon. Now it's time to see if it pays off. And my damage actually looks a lot better. The godskins are more weak to lightning damage than most others and are resistant to magic damage, so it makes sense that this worked. I proceed to die a few more times until I finally figure out a working strategy with this weapon for this fight. The strat ended up being simple, as most good strats are. I start off by blasting the sick ass L2 off the bolt, then I go in balls deep for my first repost. I back up to get off another L2 and somehow don't get hit here. Now that Fatty's at half health, he rolls, and I just stand on a pillar and give him a bunch of pokes till he's almost dead. Now it's just a matter of waiting for another parry, and bang, got his ace. Now it's time to wait for second Fatty, and I essentially just repeat the same process hunting for reposts. The key here is really to just pray that Skinny is polite and doesn't fuck me. I did pick up some sleep arrows off the ground, and I try to use them here, but they don't work, so that's awesome. Time for Fatty Part 3. Parry. Parry. Poke. 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 Oh, I'm so close. L2 time. Oh, let's go! Holy shit! I'm free! I didn't know you could kill them both if their health was that low. That's kind of sick. Let's go get rid of these disgusting boss runes. That hellish endeavor completed, I grab a big rune, a somber 10, and 7 before taking on Malekith. I always struggle with this fight, but for this run it was way worse. I had shit like this happening. <laughs> what? <laughs> then I got absolutely styled on. Oh, and I still can't really dodge this move. Safe to say this is becoming an incident. 
This fight is always weird for me. Phase 1 is easy. The Beast Clergyman's moveset is ingrained in my brain, and I've gotten pretty good at baiting out his punishes, which you can see here. I'm a pro at making this idiot stab the ground so I can poke him. The issue is Phase 2. Luckily, I've had something cooking. I finish Phase 1 with a charge attack, then start off Phase 2 with two more charged attacks for the stagger, which gives me incredible damage to start off the fight. Now, I just need to pay attention. I get a few pokes in here and there, and then I actually see the destined death ball coming and dodge it. Holy shit, what I cooked is actually working. I even bait out the front flip for a good punish here, and he's pretty much cooked. It's crazy how good that fight feels when it goes well. I'm bricked up, gentlemen. As with all low health runs, Gideon's a pain in the ass. I get one shot by most of his spells, which is super fun. I tried to fight him at a range, but... Nope. Nope. That was pretty stupid, so I settled on the classic strat of walking him down. It's kind of crazy how for most bosses you learn their move sets, learn dodging and punish windows, but with Gideon the goal is effectively walk at him and hit him so he can't attack you, and if you can't hit him, run like a crackhead and pray. But uh, it works, so I... No. Thank god. Just walk him down. Sometimes he decides to stop casting. Beautiful. Fuck boss runes. All my homies hate boss runes. I don't have much to say about Horolu. I did a whole run fighting only him, so really this fight is a formality. Oh god, please no! 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 Never mind, I still suck. You truly hate to see it. The L2 was too slow and debated me though, so it barely counts as a death. Now I'm serious and I actually use one tenth of my power to stop throwing for content. I'm gonna make the controversial statement that Godfrey is one of the easiest boss phases in this entire game, and the only reason this fight is tough or any good is because of Horolu. This part of the fight is by far the coolest. There's no break, but every attack still has a punish window, which makes the whole experience of doing it properly incredibly rewarding. Which is why I get a little frisky when I start cooking this hard. Horolu just gets me going. Oh my god, brother. There it is. I'm so good at Horolu. Holy shit. You got fucking worked. Now it's time for Radabeast, and I immediately notice a damage issue. I can get a lot of pokes in, but they don't hit nearly as hard as I'm used to for this fight. That makes it take a lot longer, and with my lower health, that's gonna be an issue. After about 30 minutes of shit like this happening, I decide to try a new weapon. So, I spend nearly an hour going around and collecting regular smithing stones to upgrade my katana to plus 16. It's going to be a pain in the ass to upgrade this any further, so I decide to check to see how good the damage is at this level. What the fuck? Now I'm not sure what I expected, but that's actually rancid garbage. I decided to call it here for the day and go rest. After a glass of warm milk and a healthy sleep, I think I've concocted what might be a viable new plan. Step 1, I go to Volcano Manor and absolutely obliterate Godskin Noble. Step 2, run to Rykard and pick up Serpent Hunter. Step 3, die. Step 4, gather a bunch of smithing stones. Alright, I am now ready for probably the hardest step in Step 5, which is Murder Radon. After all the skill issues I've been having with bosses, I'm pretty nervous. Then I saw how much damage my L2 did, and realized Radon was already cooked. I'd forgotten to take into account my vastly overleveled weapon, which made getting Radon to phase transition incredibly fast. After seeing no damage on Radabeast, watching both of Grand Sacks take massive chunks out of a health bar is incredibly satisfying. This is more of what I was expecting when I chose this weapon. I give Radon a few more pokes, and now I can retire the bolt of Grand Sacks. It has done its duty. I skirt into the Radon hole for a larval tier, grab my last somber stone, then upgrade Serpent Hunter. I respec my character for 40 vig so I can actually survive some hits, and juice strength for more serpent hunter damage. I also grabbed the strength tier for even more damage, and I've now finished my cooking. To boost my confidence, I go fight Rykard. This stinky serpent man has to be one of the easiest fights in the game, so I use the swag ash of war and fancy attacks to calmly and easily beat him. Oh, I didn't go fast enough! Ah! Shit! Shit! Fuck! Ah, ah, ah. Mom! Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. No, 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 no. Everything's fine. I did a great job. I didn't worry. I wouldn't worry at all. I. That was so easy. I didn't even worry for a second. 
All right, back to the main story. It's time to see if the Serpent Hunter is better. And actually, my damage has gone down a bit, but that's okay, because I didn't get the Serpent Hunter for more damage per hit. I got it for the poise of use. More reposts is actually more damage total, which makes this weapon better. I fucking love it when a plan comes together. After a couple more attempts, I get to Elden Beast, and chat starts using channel points to troll once again. One guy's gonna ban running. Okay. I don't need to run. I'm better than that. Alright, and someone else banned healing. Super dope. Thanks, guys. Awesome. Banned attacking? Yo! What the fuck? Yep, chat banned healing, running, and attacking for five minutes on my first good Elden Beast attempt. It went how you would expect it to. Alright, I'm dead. Sick. Then on my next good attempt, it happened again. Let's go. Banned dodge rolling? <sighs> Why? Because <laughs> he's not going to go into Elden Stars. Oh, I'm fucked. You can jump those, but... So I had a chat with chat, and we agreed to lower the length of the action band to one minute. Now I get to go again. Nice. You'd love to see it. This should be the stagger. Nice. All right, chat, just please be good. Please. I'm asking nicely. Come on, guys. Come on. I give you, I give you so much content. You're banning the square button, dude. Come on. It's only for a minute, though. And he did it at 148.13. The cutscene's gonna get us pretty far into this. He did it early. Alright, hold on. I'm gonna run away for like another couple seconds here so I can heal. There we go. We're good. Nice. There we go. Oh, do the attack again. Beautiful. Come on. Yes. It's gonna be close. Oh, please, 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 please. We're gonna get him. Yes, I am free. Holy shit. Bro, it's crazy when chat doesn't ban every possible option for attacking and healing and dodging. It's not that bad. Nice, main story finished. Now it's time to clean up all the loose shitter bosses still hanging around. First up is the easiest one, Skeledir. I decided to meme it up a bit here and try to hit the Serpent Hunter L2, which actually does a ton of damage. Holy shit. With this damage though, Mr. Deer doesn't stand a chance and gets promptly worked. One more. There we go. Okay. Now we're going to take a 180 and head to Ferrum to deal with the two-headed Minus Placidus Axe. The last few times I've done this fight, every attack has one-shotted me. So it's quite the change of pace to be able to run at him to get in hits without the stress of being turned into paste on the ground. My damage is still actually pitiful in this fight though, so it's going to take a lot of pokes to get through this. Nice. I'll be able to get close right here. Oh, this could do it. Finish him! Ooh! First try Placidisax in the Elden Ring challenge run? That's never happened. Now it's time for another small mission. First, I do some sick parkour. Then I find Sewer Moog and take a shit in on him. Then I do some more sick parkour. Finally, I ride a coffin off a waterfall and this gets me to Estelle. Well, not really. There's a lot of walking I still have to do, but we'll skip that and get right to the part where I fight space anal beads. I start the fight off hot by getting tail smacked twice and missing my first attack. Nice. Then some music starts playing, so I have to mute and fix that. All right, we're back. Wow, that was, a, this has just been awful. <laughs> I'm doing a really bad job. Well said, Past Ratty. This is truly a disgusting fight attempt. Luckily, I do fat damage and fat poise damage. So I just go Super Saiyan and quickly finish off the fight once I've locked in. Now I want to do Fortisax, but unfortunately I have to break some rules to do that. 
I'm gonna need a couple of items that aren't ground loot, and if you don't like that, lick these. These nuts! So I get the Finger Slayer Blade to get the Carrying Inverted Statue to get the Curse Mark of Death, which is a legal drop for this run, to go fight 40 sacks. First though, I have to deal with this gangbang. Yeah, that, that was easy. Alright, zombie dragon time. My first attempt was going great. Fuck! Until it wasn't. This fight isn't bad, but I have a lot of issues with it. Firstly, the tracking lightning attack is stupid. It almost never hits you if you stay moving, but it's really annoying to get hits in while it's tracking me. It just seems to really draw out the fight. Secondly, I can't lock on to his two giant legs, which are the only things you can actually hit in this entire fight. Please, FromSoft, let me lock onto the dragon toes. It would help so much. All in all though, I still wrecked this fight. Now I need the Halley Tree Medallion, so it's Nile time. I grab the three bewitching branches that are on the floor and use them to sway the loyalties of Nile's dick riders. Then I die. Shit. Well, I still have one branch left, so the fight should be manageable. Oh fuck. I guess it's time to learn something new for this fight, and chat suggested parrying, which I assumed was stupid, because, you know, it was a chat suggestion. Turns out it was actually a good idea. Holy shit. Good job, chat. I'm so proud of you. In all seriousness, this is a banger way to fight Nile. His attacks are so slow that it's really easy to get the parry timing down, and his health bar gets deleted by Rapostas. I'm always going to bring a shield to this fight, because this is banging. Eventually I get the final hit and go collect one half of the Halley Tree Medallion to fight the final bosses. I have to break some rules here to get the second half of the medallion, which sucks, because I have to get it from the NPC Albus. But this playthrough was weird because it was just mysteriously on the ground. With access to the Consecrated Snowfield, I also get access to Moog via the teleporter. And I'm gonna say it, Moog cheats. I can't get the Purifying Crystal tier to avoid his Nihil, so I keep sacking three flasks in every attempt, which is just a massive detriment. A smarter player would go get Moog's Shackle, since it's legal in this run. But I refuse to be accused of being a smart person. I ain't no fucking nerd. Instead, I do things like get Moog down to a pube of health and die trying to greed the last hit. Fuck it! Ah! Oh no! Yeah, that's how a professional does it, baby. Eventually, I do get serious though. I have his moveset completely downloaded, so once I focus up and stop being greedy, it's very easy to weave attacks between spear hits and phase one. I even get in extra hits when he does his countdown for bonus damage. I have phase 2 memorized as well, but it's a lot more annoying to try and avoid his puddles of fire blood in the arena. It's also annoying to manage the bleed bar, because it can build up ridiculously fast in this phase without him landing a hit. It definitely feels like his fire is just him stalling. Despite that, I keep clapping his cheeks as he says daddy no more. Daddy chill. But I don't stop, and eventually Mr. Blood dies. Or goes to the DLC, I guess we'll find out in June. And now it's time for something I've been dreading this entire run, Melania. Blade of Mikula. I decide to stick with the Serpent Hunter for this fight because it is one of, if not the only weapon in this game that can interrupt Melania's quick slashes with a poke. Look at this. Sick. That extra punish window is huge for doing more damage in phase one and phase two. And that matters a lot because this is the first time I've tried this fight without status effects. Now watch me cook. Nice. This should finish it. Beautiful. All right, we go, we go, we go. Just don't even think about it. Just don't even think about it. Just go. Just go, brother. Nice. We run. Oh, that barely reached. Beautiful. All right. Patience is the key.
Let's go! Holy shit! I never want to fight Melania without status effects again, dude. <laughs> Holy shit. That was ridiculous. Alright, let's get rid of these dirty boss runes. And let's go finish the fucking run, bro. Holy. And that's how I beat Elden Ring, like a true rat, by scavenging everything I could off the floor. If you liked that, check out some of my other videos on screen now. Until next time, be good, be kind, adios.